Yeah, I'm single now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell her, please. Tell her. Be here once again at this month, yeah. and we have some awesome, awesome people here. Especially yesterday and today, mm -hmm. that God was really going to do something with this. Yeah. Uh, just just leave, get free, whatever, and not walk into that place, then I really am that I have two awesome, 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 phenomenal women. to awesome women right yes, yes. and so we're going to start from the beginning you guys know how we do it we introduce ourselves and then i really 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 want you to stay connected to this this is going to be awesome make sure so i'm lori fox so glad to be here tonight um again you know we know october is breast cancer awareness but mm -hmm. it is also domestic violence awareness so that is our theme this month, and we are just very honored to have these guests here to share with us. So it's going to be a great night. Please share, because the goal of them sharing and the goal of us focusing on this for this month is to encourage someone to open your mouth. Tell your story. It'll help another woman. So it's going to be a good night. Yes. Hi, um, I'm Karen Williams. I am a mother, and I... I'm a wife. I have three kids. I'm a business owner, uh, Dejan Creations. Wow. We do uh, weddings, yes. and uh, we're, I'm an event planner. So, you know, if you need a wedding, you have a wedding coming up, you have an event coming up, please call Dejan Creations, and we will create something new for you. Wow. <laughs> and, I mean, she does the work. Yes, wow. She does. I've never seen any creations like her creations. <laughs> so make sure you, te you post the, or the name of the company. Yes. Go we'll for it. it. Yes, ma'am. All right. I am Aisha Tate, and we are here celebrating. We're bringing awareness to domestic violence awareness. And um, I just want you to know, of course, always that you are loved. You matter. You are beautiful. And you are a gift that's meant to contribute to life. This month, we want you to break the silence to stop yes. the violence. And amplify your voice. Yes. Yes, madam. All right. Hi, I'm <laughs> Valencia Luckett. I am a wife, mother, grandmother. Wow. A minister of the gospel, <laughs> yeah. new author. Oh, my And the God. owner of an accessory company, Just Be a Lady About It. Oh, And that's it awesome. is more than about the fashion. It's about you. Good deal. So I am glad to be here tonight, too. So make sure you guys post that. Just be a lady about it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> nice, nice. It goes a long way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we want to talk, first of all, do domestic violence or domestic abuse. I just want to kind of define it because people look at um, things, their perception sometimes is different than the uh, generalized perception as it relates to abuse. Because, you know, I grew up in a family where I thought that abuse was just common. I didn't really c consider it to be like abuse. I just thought that's how we rolled, you know? Mm -hmm. this, this is the things they do. They fight, people mm -hmm. fight, you know, and they, they go on and they fight again. And so, but that's not, that's mm -hmm. not okay. Right. That's really that's not the way marriage or partnership is designed to be. So domestic abuse is defined as uh, abuse of a person by another person with whom the victim is living, has lived, or with whom a significant relationship exists. 
The abuse may take the form of verbal abuse, sexual abuse, physical battering, or psychological or emotional unavailability. Un and so that is the def 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 definition, a defined uh, fact as it relates to domestic abuse. Yes. And it's not okay. Abuse is never okay. Never. You know, I mean, even if you grew up in a home where it appears to be okay, some people think it's culturally motivated, that it only happens in this ethnicity or this or whatever. No, it crosses all yeah, borders, all social, economic, education. It does not matter, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we just want to kind of go into those areas, and we're going to start with Lori and kind of work our way around mm -hmm. and just... Talk a little bit about uh, any abuse that you right. may have encountered, be it you, be it family members, right. and then right. we'll just right. kind of talk about how we need to resolve this thing in our right. communities. Right, and I am going to make it really short because I, I really want to give my time to these ladies, mm -hmm. um, and, and I've shared my stories, and I have. I come from a family of many beautiful women, um, and it wasn't always that they were the ones being abused, and it's not funny, but sometimes they were the abusers. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it both ways. It does happen. Um, it's not acceptable either way. Mm -hmm. And it, again, it's just something we need to bring awareness to. Karen? Well, um, my story started with uh, me being in a marriage for seven years of abuse, and, um, but I've never saw it. I've never heard about it in my family, wow. wasn't used of it, didn't even know what it was about. Wow. But um, married a, a man that was, um, I thought I loved, but um, it was just out of uh, sympathy. Mm. Married mm. to the person for seven years, and it started right at the beginning. Wow. Um, the first month we were together, it started with the verbal abuse, and then before you know it, it was the hitting and pushing and shoving. But the thing that I can remember of the whole seven years is that it's still not right whether you know about it or if it's in your family or it's not in your family. That's just something that's just not tolerated. But like I say, it started right away. And before you know it, I was full blown into an abusive relationship wow. and didn't understand how I got there. Jesus. But... The story that I can remember the most is that I followed the, the bylaws of the land. Mm -hmm. They tell you to get restraining orders. They tell mm -hmm. you to make sure you're in safe places, never mm -hmm. go by yourself. And, and so we had separated. Um, I did the restraining order like I was supposed to, uh, lived with my mom, was very protective, didn't go anywhere by myself. But one night, um, mm -hmm. And this is the one that sticks out the most for me, so I will share this one. We were separated. We, I did have the straining, uh, restraining order, and um, it still didn't help. Mm -hmm. I had polices around the clock coming by my mom's house, watching mm -hmm. on us. That still didn't help. Um, my mom, and at the time, my son was two years, uh, no, one years old. Um, when I left him, because... I took the abuse, but when a child came into the part of it, I had to make a change. That's right. Because Good. now it's not just me. It was a right. child involved. Right. But came home one night to my mom's house, um, me and my young son, and my mom was supposed to meet me within an hour. Well, walked into the house where we lived, and my I was carrying the, my son, and didn't have many lights on in the house, so I flipped the light on in the kitchen, and that was the only light that was on until I got to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Passed the bathroom and smelt smoke. Well, nobody in our house smokes. Wow. And I smelt a cigarette. So couldn't turn any lights on, so just went, had that little light from the kitchen, laid the child down, and as I was coming back mm -hmm. out the room, he comes out the door. And immediately, I run to the phone to try to call someone. He gets the phone, takes it from me, and um, pulls it out the pull it out the wall. Wow. So by that time, I'm scared. We're tussling back and forward, and go to we were in a duplex. So I go to run next door. He tells me nobody's home. I've already checked. Jeez. Wow. But I ran there anyway because I was in so much fear. I, I needed someone to be there. Mm -hmm. 
And when I ran around the corner to the other house, he ran behind me. And all I can remember was him pulling the back of my hair and I seen a knife come across my throat. Mm -hmm. At that point, I passed out. I passed out, I mean, I heard everything, but I just could not move. He picked me up, he brought me back into the house where the child was laying in the bed and put me on the floor and raped me. So people can say, well, y'all was married, how's that rape? No, it's right. still not right. No is That's no. Right. That's right. Now, whether you uh, in a relationship right. or not, especially an abusive relationship. Of course. And the whole time I was there, I heard everything going on, mm. but I was in such fear that I could not even move. Jeez. Wow. I could not move. Uh, so by this time, my mom's light is pulling up. She's pulling up uh, in the driveway, and her light shines through the bedroom. I saw that. I heard everything was going on, but still could not move. Mm. Fear had gripped me so much. Wow that I could not even move. So they bring me to the hospital. Now I'm in the back of his car. My mom, I hear my mom talking to him. They're fussing back and forward. She's trying to find out what is going on with me. And he said, I'm trying to bring her to the, I'm trying to bring her to the hospital. Even still in the car, even when my mom was there, I still could not move. <clears throat> I could not open my mouth the whole time, the whole way to the hospital. They get me to the hospital. They bring me in the emergency room. Still couldn't talk. Mm. I couldn't even tell them what happened. Oh, my Lord. Mm. Fear had gripped my body mm. so much that I could not even talk. But to say that you're married and you're in an abusive relationship and you know that this person will hurt you. I grew up where we were strong women. Mm -hmm. We, you know, it, I have six sisters. Mm -hmm. um, my mom made us to be very strong and independent. How did I get into that? How did I allow myself even to be in that situation? Mm -hmm. I didn't know at the time. But we'll come back to that. But the reason why I'm saying that, you can get yourself into situations where you don't even, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if, you, if your family wasn't abused. That's if right. you didn't have a history of it. Right. Nobody didn't talk about it. Nobody verbally abused you or mentally abused you. But wind up being in that That's relationship. Right. So it, it doesn't matter if you're used of it or you're not used of it you can find yourself in a, an abusive relationship right. and really don't know how you got there. Mm, so good. I just, you know, hope that you can find a way to see the signs because I, I saw all the signs mm -hmm. at the beginning. I did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't abusive, but it was other signs mm -hmm. that I did not take Red note flags. to mm -hmm. because I was looking, you know, you know, they would always say, make sure nobody's hitting you or beating you or cussing you out. Well, he didn't do none of that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's the signs I was looking for, but didn't know that there was so many other signs mm -hmm. going on wow. that was there for me, but uh, just didn't get it at the time. That's good. Maisha? Well, um, I'm glad that she was talking about that because um, Nancy and I were talking before the show and we were looking, she showed me this thing that Jill Scott had posted and it was talking about how we can find ourselves in these relationships because one, we ignore the red flags. Of course. We, we looking at potential of what they can become rather than what they're presenting us with right now. And we end up lowering our standards and we find ourselves with these people who, yeah, they're good some way, because all of us possess good, but what they're showing us is the terrible, and we're accepting it. Yes. Then we find ourselves there, and we're like, yes. how did I get here? Well, we put ourselves there to a sense, so I feel like as we continue to talk about this, it's important to remember that some of us just put ourselves there because we, we put on blinders, you know? So it's important to remove the blinders and see people for who they are. It doesn't make you less Christian to accept that this person got some issues and I may not need to be in a relationship with them. And even, be, let's get beyond Christendom. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just period. You know, I mean, we have to be able to see the signs. Look at the signs straight in the face and say, you know what? 
something is just not right about this. You know, I mean, just it's, it, it is what it is. You know, Maya Angelou says it like this. I said it like this before, you know, she passed. When people show you who they are, yeah. believe them. Believe them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's regardless, in the church, out the church, around the church, whatever. Just when people. people show you who they are, mm -hmm. believe them. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. lucky. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, my, um, I was unfortunately in that situation, but I was 18. And I always say I was fresh off the boat in college because my world consisted of love before that. And I wow. think what happened was we were at a dance in college and I was just saying hi to everybody because we all hung out together. Mm -hmm. But apparently the person, and this was not long after meeting them, but I, rem you know, in hindsight, they were very charming, mm -hmm. very polite, opened the door, a lot of attention, really the way my father treated me. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But on this particular night, the night the abuse started, they offered to walk me to my dorm. And I said, well, we'll go this way. No, we can go a shorter way. So we go behind the dorms, wow. and I'm shoved against the wall, and I'm punched in my stomach until oh, I cannot Lord. breathe. And this person was much bigger than me because I was like 100 pounds wet in college. Mm -hmm. And you're a male anyway in that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm all bruised up, and he takes me to the dorm mother, which apparently knew this person, had a history, but nobody told me. Wow. And my dorm mother... I said, call my parents. My dumb mother stepped in as a surrogate mother, adult figure, and said, listen, let me talk to you. This is what men do. Oh, Jeez. Jeez. And maybe if you would have oh, not God. done this. Oh, now, I'm 18, and I'm away from home, and I'm bruised. Oh, my God. And this person literally manipulated me on top of the abuse. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. So it set a spiral mm -hmm. and a message to me at 18 saying, okay, we'll try. And this is how that door was open. That's why I always say there's a doorway. That's right. That opens and there's gatekeepers to that door Jeez. of deceit. Jeez. And um, so it continued and it just the highlights of it. Um, I got pregnant and tried to break the relationship off. Of course, it was just like a cycle. Mm -hmm. And the person would always know what to do around other adults. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a perfect gentleman. And I didn't want to tell my father because I was a yeah. peacekeeper in my mind because my father's one rule was don't anybody ever curse, disrespect, put your hands on my daughter. And in my mind, I was like, my dad's going to go to jail because he's going to kill you when he finds out. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my father to be hurt. So I thought taking on that responsibility wow. and being mm -hmm. silent. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote about that, that there's a time that silence is not golden. That's, That's right. Good. That's good. And That's um, right. so I wouldn't say anything, but I was pregnant. And I went back to school. And they had an apartment off campus. And they had friends over. And they were literally locking me in their room that particular night and punching me in my stomach and in my face and going back out, fixing their clothes, fixing their face. Like you go to a boxing ring, you just go wipe up. Going back out laughing with their friends. The friends had no idea that I was in there. I kept trying to figure out how to get out the window. If I got out, I'd fall. Or, and it's just this fear that comes over you. And by this time, my mindset, I have lost touch with who I really was because I was always very outgoing, very people friendly, people oriented. I mean, I'm a New Orleanian, so, but that was just gone. That demeanor, and then when I would go home for the weekends, of course my body was all bruised up and sore. And my dad's like, what happened? Here comes the lion. Never lied to my parents. I fell. I just making up excuses, not realizing that I'm just falling into a pattern. Right. And long story short, the manipulation on feeling sorry for people and not letting people own their own stuff is a bad thing. Of course it is. It's a real bad thing because you can't take on the role of the police. You can't take on the role of the judge. You can't be the lawyer, and you're not a punching bag. Right. The name calling, the emotional abuse was there. The verbal abuse was there. The manipulation 
with, you know, well, I know I hit you, so I'm going to give you affection. But then when I'm mad at you, I'm going to withdraw back from you. And then you're going to feel like it's your fault. You can keep trying to find out how to make this right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And so didn't leave when I got pregnant and my parents didn't make me get married or anything like that. I made that decision because the honeymoon phase came in. Of course. And they were, you know, I'm gonna, we, I'm getting ready to graduate from college, and we're gonna get a house, and it's all gonna be well. And that's behind me. Still, I did not know, lurking in the past, that this person had done this to another young lady that had to leave college. Mm. His mother knew, did not say anything. Wow. Mm. His grandmother knew, did not say anything. Mm-hmm. So I married that person, and long story short, and of course you can imagine it increased. The adultery, cheating, um, you know, it's your fault. I remember, well, going out, like, for anniversary dinner or whatever thing, and just being really excited, like, okay, maybe things are getting better and it's going to work, and we're midway to the restaurant. And they just turn, literally, no trigger, no switch, nothing. You know, you a B, you this why, this is why I mess over you. They, and I'm sitting there, like, petrified, like, what? That's disrespectful on so many levels. And I'm like, I've taken so much, and you start getting to that point that you're saying, okay, yeah, this thing about to end one way or another. And I think when they figured it out, they start trying to put more sugar on Mm -hmm. it. But it got worse because it's something they couldn't control. Of course, of course. And so inside that marriage, I had um, towards... The beginning, of course, it was the shoving, the cursing. I had a black eye because the food wasn't the right temperature. Um, drink wasn't cool enough. So I had a plate thrown. And this was right after my mother died. Jeez. So I'm already broken right, 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 from right, right. that. And I remember lying, saying I burned my eye with the curling one because my hair was long at the time. And um, I just remember feeling like in a rabbit hole, like just in that black, deep, dark place. I started wearing all black. I would fall asleep at red lights because at night I was up with knives under my pillow because I was afraid. And this was after my daughter was born. So, of course, I'm like, I got I got to get out of this. But where am I going to go? Because if I tell, then this and it's just like a barrage, like a mental battle. And so at the ending of the thing is where it really just came to like this big volcano type abuse. It was more consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a knife put to my throat and I was told I'm going to kill you. Um, I left and I came back and that's not the right thing to do when you know what already has happened. That's right. I can't, you know, you can't tell other people what to do, but I can say for me in Mm -hmm. hindsight, when I left, I should have stayed gone. Um, so I had handcuffs. I was told, you know, we're going to talk. had handcuffs put on my back. Push. Well, before that, it was, you know, I miss you, and come on, let's go in the bedroom. And then, okay, push down, handcuffs put on my back, pillow put over my face. Jeez, jeez, Lord. Mm. And nobody but God was there because nobody was in the house. Um, I had a 357 Magnum put to my head. I was taken out the house into the backyard, and a gun was put to my head. And my daughter, in this incident, was beating on the window. Watch it. Don't kill my mommy. And I said, that's it. Because I'm either going to take your life, you're going to take mine or both of us, but I can't do this to her. I can't, you can't save one and let the other go for the sake of that one. So I started, you know, in my mind said, I got to go. And I remember going to church and a young lady prayed with me and she gave me a word from the Lord. And she said, you're not losing your mind. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. And then another lady comes, she said, you know, your husband has a murdering spirit. Mm -hmm. And she said, Mm -hmm. God's going to cover you. But walk in wisdom. Mm, 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 mm. And I got saved inside the marriage. So I'm a baby in Christ. And I don't know all 66 books, but I knew how to pray. Mm-hmm. And I right. knew that one day I got tired and I fell on my knees and I said, God, I have tried. Mm-hmm. I said, if you're not going to change him, mm-hmm. 
then move me. Amen. And I prayed that prayer. And then at the end of that series of events, the last thing that happened was I was, I forgot to lock his car door. I got cussed out. Phone got ripped out the wall. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm calling somebody. Now I'm getting my courage. Like I know, mm-hmm. ripped the phone out. Got cussed out. You don't pay this bill. You can't use this phone. Just standing in my face. You know, you could feel hate. Just screaming, spitting, cussing, foaming at the mouth, just out of control. But this particular night, I stood up. And when I stood up, they slammed my head against like a plywood cut, like an uncut wood door. That's why I wear glasses. Mm -hmm. But I still was like, I'm out. I'm out. Wow. Listen, 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 Mm -hmm. listen. The most horrific when you were talking, I'm like, wow, the most horrific um, form of domestic violence abuse that I've seen is literally to have someone that I love uh, have someone bite her nose off partially, take a, just bite, I mean, just the most demonic thing I think that a person could do and have that person, you know, go to have plastic surgery. But what was more just bizarre is to have that person go back into that relationship mutilated and so I know it's just it's really really I believe at most most often it could become demonically spiritual I guess where your soul is tied there's a a ceiling of souls you know and even scripturally it talks about if you lie with a harlot you become one with a harlot but it's something that happens when we intimately get involved with an individual and it's just very bizarre Mm-hmm. I saw, I posted it, as a matter of fact, on my page. Uh, uh, this man, this bodybuilder, he looks through this woman's phone. He didn't know it was caught on um, camera. He looks through her phone, his girlfriend or whatever phone. She comes into the house, and I've never seen anyone beat an individual, a human that way, in that way. He beat her with chairs. He stabbed her. He would wipe, mm-hmm. wash the knives off, come back and start stabbing again. He threw hot candles on her. Everything I'm at, he stumped her. She was in a coma for days. He videoed it? No, it was on the camera system, oh, so I don't know is. how they got it. It was crazy, but he was a bodybuilder, wow. and um, apparently he was on steroids. Mm-hmm. And so then I guess he threw her outside because the neighbors saw her, and she was in the hospital in a coma for days. She was his number one uh, advocate, advocate mm-hmm. to ask to beg the judge to let him go free. Mm. That is just not okay. So I wanna kinda go over some of the signs of abuse that we should look for. I kinda pulled some things today. It says, if you are afraid of your partner, that's a big red flag. Mm -hmm. You may be scared to say what you think, to bring up certain topics, or to say no to sex. No matter the reason, fear has no place in a healthy relationship, okay? It talks about if your partner is, if your partner bullies, threatens, or control you. And some of the signs. What are some of the signs that you guys noted? I have some here. One says, most often they accuse you of having an affair because they're in those various relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you say about that? What are some of the the signs to look for? Well, when they they start saying that, um, why why are you looking at that person? Or Mm -hmm. I saw you looking at that person. Mm -hmm. Or... They want to go somewhere, but they don't want you to go. Mm-hmm. So you're always stuck at the house mm-hmm. you're, or wherever you're living. Mm-hmm. So those signs that are they're saying, they're, they're talking. I mean, mm-hmm. those signs are really talking loud. It's just when you're so scared of the person, you're in so much fear that you really can't, you don't, you don't say nothing back. You just mm-hmm. obey. Mm-hmm. So you find yourself just living in a house, just obeying. Because you don't want to get hit. Yeah. Yeah. Because at any time, they can hit you. Mm-hmm. Anytime. They can back slap you. They can cuss you. You can be, I remember a time in the car, we was just driving. And we, he used to, um, we used to go to this place. And he, he, in the car, on the way home, he just said, I saw you looking at that guy. Well, I was too scared to look anywhere. My eyes stayed on him because if I was looking this way or that way, he said I was looking at somebody. I remember on the way home, I just got a pow, back slap. 
in my face on the way home. So the signs are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they're saying that I saw you looking at a person or you can't go anywhere, you can't even go to the store without them, mm -hmm. they are in control of your life. That's a right. sign of controlling your life. Mm -hmm. If they don't want you with your family, Mm -hmm. That's a sign of controlling Control. your life because mm -hmm. they're scared for you to be around your of family course. because they're scared you're going to say something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I was around my family and still would not say something. Mm -hmm. There was a way out, but I still wouldn't get out because, because of I fear. was fear. Mm -hmm. because I of had fear. so much fear. Yeah. Fear is torment. And then you Glory. said something earlier about how, you know, you gave a couple of situations where the person went back. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. went back. And we were talking earlier and you were talking about you finally got an understanding of what was going on with you when you were trying to be in this relationship, more of being a help. Sometimes as nurturers, our nurturing gift goes wrong, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. talk mm -hmm. about that, Karen. Um, I was, yes, I was trying to figure out why did I get myself into that relationship when I was not used to that. Mm -hmm. I, I had no signs of it. So why? So one of the questions I had asked God was, why did I go there? Why did I even put myself in that situation? What brought me to that? And the Lord plainly told me, it's your gift. And I'm thinking, my gift? What, what does my gift have to do with, it, with this? Well, my gift is a servant. Mm -hmm. I'm a server. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I saw him, and I, I saw him in a place of need. Mm -hmm. So as being a server... My gift was to try to help that person. Mm -hmm. I wanted to help him because I saw that he needed help. So I mm -hmm. felt sorry for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I married him, it wasn't about love. It was about I felt sorry for him, and I thought I can change him. Of course. Mm -hmm. I thought I can help him, mm -hmm. and I thought that I can fix it. How many know that you can't fix nobody That's but right. yourself? That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. fix anybody else. Mm -hmm. The only person you can fix is yourself. Yeah. So right. when I married him and I got into that relationship, I got into a relationship that I thought I can help. Mm -hmm. So hmm. when you know about your gifts, that's why it's so important that people understand what their gift is. Mm -hmm. All these gifts may not apply. But my gift is a servant. Mm -hmm. I, must, I love to serve people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I find myself trying to help people, make them feel mm -hmm. better, trying yep. to fix them, mm -hmm. trying to please them. Mm -hmm. All the while, I was putting myself in a situation mm -hmm. that was unhealthy. Yes. Yes. That I didn't mm -hmm. know that I was in an abusive race, relationship until I got into it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because of the gift. So it's so important, people, mm -hmm. that we just understand who we are. Yes. And yes. we understand when we do have a gift. We that we not take that gift and apply yes. it to because your gift mm -hmm. is connected to your life. Of That's course, right. it's a lifelong That's lesson. Right. That's right. Your gifts are connected to your life, and when you go to someone and you try to help them out of a sympathy or out mm -hmm. of trying to help them because that's what you're gifting, mm -hmm. be careful. Mm -hmm. yes. And I'm speaking for myself. I cannot that's speak good. for anybody else. But be careful that you not t help someone out of sympathy mm -hmm. and make sure that you are in alignment with your gift yes. and that that's your good. gift does not take you in an unhealthy And see, what I, when that's you so said good. that, I thought about that's the enemy's plan to pervert your gift, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, to put it in a... a, a different perspective, mm -hmm. knowing that you love to serve, that's your heart, that's right. you know, it's the call like the, old, the cliche, uh, your people taking kindness for weakness. Yes. Yes. But see, the Lord has given us these gifts, but the enemy knows the gifts. Oh, he yeah. he does, he, has, he didn't give it to us, but he sees the way you oh, act. Yeah. Yes. You know, your fruit will, sh will surely tell right. what you're about. Yes. So if you're like, you got to make sure that you're not trying to be a savior. Yes. Yes. You, you see what I'm saying? A savior, to have a savior yes. complex or and then become codependent yes. on someone because you're trying to save them. Mm -hmm. No, that's not our job to save that's right. one, right. to save our, this person or that person. But our job is to serve 
under a mandate that is healthy. Yes. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That goes for even yes. spiritual abuse. True. I'm yeah. very, I'm very cautious of how I let people serve me. Yes. I purposely yes. never use people. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I don't dominate over them. I don't want to be a lord over them because that becomes an ab abuse as well. Yes. So the new thing now is even spiritual abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. people, uh, leaders sleeping with people that are in the congregation, all of that kind of stuff, where there's no yes. ethics or m morality no involved yes. that is abusive mm -hmm. and I can look at a person I know their giftings because that's my gift to see where someone fits yep. in the body to know what they're capable of know what God is calling them to do and if I capitalize on that thing then I become an abuser mm -hmm. that's right. you see what I'm saying right. I become an abuser and the right. other part of that is people like you said knowing your gift like I know that's me too I normally serve but one thing that I had to learn and I told you know family members and guys, you know, you you, know, you find yourself fighting to be a part of people's lives because they do push you away. Mm -hmm. Like you say, they want to make you feel like it's your fault. And then you're fighting in a place where you should be walking away. Right. But it's manipulation because they know you're like right. that. So they draw you in with that mm -hmm. just to turn it on you. And you find yourself, like you said, getting beat up. And you ask for it in a sense. And, you know, that's one thing that I had to be careful of because while I wasn't physically abused, I watched somebody get physically abused. And the fear is real because not only does it come on you, but if you watch that, you yeah, take right, that right, on. Right. Like yeah. I'm living in a room next door to somebody who I know is getting abused and I can't sleep at night when I sleep peacefully. But now fears grip me like I'm wondering because what happened was this particular person had become so overwhelmed with anger that it started trickling over. Abusing her was no longer enough. Now it became open, since y'all know, I'm gonna do y'all too. Right. And I be God darn, you gonna die. And so now it's like, what do you do? Because you, this family now, mm -hmm. and you crossing these lines, well, okay, you cross this line and you meeting death. And now, you know, it's a very hard position to be in because fear is real and it can push you to a place where you're just protecting yourself and you're not the one getting abused, but it's too close to you. So now you're afraid too. And you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Like you can see what's happening to your family, even if they don't say it. Like this one particular girl literally start changing her uh, what she eat. He don't like it, so she don't want it either. And it didn't make sense to me. And I started asking questions. Are you getting abused? And they will lie and say, no, yeah. you know. And I was going to say, too, you know, even though the abuse was going on, it wasn't just a one-sided thing. Because with the inside of that, you take on a different mindset because you are dealing with manipulation. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to out-manipulate the manipulator. Mm -hmm. It's like living in a different society. Mm -hmm. And there are times where, you know, the licks weren't going just one way. Mm -hmm. We're far back towards mm -hmm. the end. And that's the point where you understand some fights are best won when you walk away. That's yes. right. Because that's it, true. if, if what was unleashed mm -hmm. on you becomes unleashed back on the abuser, uh -huh. somebody going to jail for That's murder. Right. Exactly. That's right. And that was my breaking point. That's so, right. you know, the signs I would tell people are the manipulation, the lying, mm -hmm. um, and control. Mm -hmm. um, also, the emotional withholding or either mm -hmm. showering with mm -hmm. excessive gifts. gifts and attention, mm -hmm. after flattery the after the mm -hmm. abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, just showing up to everything, like literally you can't turn right without the person saying, well, what you doing? Well, I just, you know, I want to have lunch with, well, no, you don't really want to have lunch with me. You want to know what I'm doing. Right. Checking, you know, well, did you see so-and-so? Uh, did you see, like she said, did you see what I'm looking at? You? No, because it wasn't a mindset. Um, just false accusations and what was good for the goose wasn't good for the gander. I mean, that just that type of mindset. And also um, intimidation mm -hmm. both ways. Mm -hmm. I realized my abuser was intimidated by my strength and my intellect. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it was wow. like, and they, you know, I mean, they had to break me down. you were a college down. graduate. Yeah, so, they had to break me yeah. down. Don't think you're so I wasn't smart. dumb going in. Right, 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 right. So it was a challenge to their personality, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, because I was a talk backer or, mm -hmm. you know, a rebuttal. Mm -hmm. So that was just a trigger. But those are some of the signs. But, um, but I, I found a, a term today, and I want you guys to, you know, just kind of explain this a little further. It's called gaslighting. What is that? 
-hmm. Gaslighting is a term that describes a type of emotional and psychological in abuse in which an abuser convinced, convinces his or her victim that the abuse he or she is remembering didn't actually occur or wasn't nearly as severe as the survivor remembers. So in actuality, you know, you get beat up, black eyed, and so on and so forth, and you know, or make you think it was your fault. You know, if you hadn't done that, you pushed me, you know that that provokes me, that kind of foolishness, to where the individual takes that on and really begins to start blaming themselves yes. mm -hmm. or really thinking in their mind that maybe it wasn't that bad. You know, maybe I'm just overreacting. Mm -hmm. You know, make really putting you on the edge, I call it a crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some got to go on, some got to have more yes. Put you right on the edge of crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's scary because that goes on both ways. Like it when is. you read that, I thought of more of a woman doing that to a man than a man doing that even to a woman. You know what I'm saying? Like we can be very abusive. Like you both said, you mm -hmm. switch roles mm -hmm. and you lashing out. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Like, I didn't slap you that hard. I didn't mm. cut you that deep. Oh, you know, it, it can yeah. go both ways. That didn't hurt like that. <laughs> yeah. oh. You all right, you tough. <laughs> can I just say just an example? Oh. Just an example. Oh, yeah. But gaslighting is scary because that Everybody really knows. did happen. And wow. I really pulled wow. over to the side of the road like, wait a minute. I mean, because I was like, you owe me an apology. Like, Adam, and they were like, for what? And just the for what wasn't like wow. a casual. It was like, no, like, what are you talking about? Wow. Like, dude, wow. what are you talking about? Wow. They literally would not. It was, and I said, well, mm. did you have amnesia? Because I know I was there. And I know the evidence. But and for a while, I'm like, I know that happened. See? <laughs> and See? That, that's mm -hmm. a real thing. It because is it real. Almost, like, okay. I think, again, um, where we talked about the codependency, maybe can like split your psyche. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. your mind says this, but on this side of the, the mind or brain, it's like, you know, trying to justify or, mm -hmm. you know, minimize mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very dangerous. Oh, I yes. think that's very dangerous yes, because yes. that's the, the place, I believe, that can put you in such a deep, dark place, mm -hmm. a deep, dark depression, because yes. now it's messing with you mentally. Mm -hmm. yes. You are yes. uh, an emotional wreck. Mm -hmm. And yes. that has to, that, you got to deal with that one. Yes. Okay, so Karen, talk to us about what finally caused the break. And you find, because you are, you're powerful now. Phenomenal. <laughs> yes. She's yes. phenomenal. I just, I just the, the, before I say that, I just want to say that we have to remember when they say they're not going to do it again. Mm. They are going to do it again. Wow. That's good. Come on, come on. They're going to do it again. And <sighs> they're going to keep doing it. So they're not going to stop. So mm -hmm. if they come to you and apologize and say, I, I was just upset. I'm not going to do that again. You know, give me another chance. It's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Because once you stay in that situation and they know that they have put fear in you, they're going to do it again because they know that you're not going to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to stay there, and you're going to just deal with it. But I can say I thank the Lord that he gave me enough power and mm -hmm. strength Come to on. get out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And good. when I got out of it, it wasn't easy because, like I said, we had to do all the restraining orders, and we had to... You know, the police was around the clock, around the house. I mean, I thank the Lord I had favor at the time where we had family members that were police. So they protected me often. Mm -hmm. But I made a choice that when the child came into the world that I had to get out. Mm -hmm. And I, the way I got out is that I lived with my mom. I had moral support. Good deal. Mm -hmm. I went to therapy. Mm -hmm. Oh, come I on. Got That's stripped. very important. That's good. So you have to go to some kind of therapy because you can't do it on your own. Mm -hmm. That's come on. You just cannot. You don't have the strength to do it on your own. But once you start going to therapy and getting help or getting counseling, you know, I just want you to know there is places out there where you can go to get mm -hmm. help. Don't stay in it. There is a way out. Mm -hmm. You just have to find the way. There mm -hmm. is a way out. Mm -hmm. Call somebody. Call family members. 
but be safe when you do it mm -hmm. because they're always watching you mm -hmm. and they're always waiting for you to make a phone call. So be careful trying to get out of the relationship because it's also, it, you can be in danger just trying mm -hmm. to get out. Mm -hmm. So when I say get out, get out and use wisdom. Yes. Be safe with what you're doing. But I did have therapy. I did have family support. I did have uh, police support. Mm -hmm. um, once they know that you have put the restraining order against them, that's the first thing they ask you. Because if you get the restraining order, they know that you want out. Mm -hmm. But until you get that restraining order, wow. the police will not help you. Mm -hmm. They will not help you until you get that restraining, restraining order. order. Mm -hmm. Once you go through that system and get the restraining order, which I did, I was able to get the help and support. But when I say God mm. does it, and I don't look like what I've been through. Come That's on, right. girl. I don't, I don't look like <laughs> I've been in an abusive relationship. Yes, like, yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I do not look like it because I found a way out. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when God does it, it's no residue. That's right. Yes. It don't look like you've been through mm -hmm. an abusive relationship because God did it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I say to women out there, there is help, and God can help you get out of the relationship. Please use wisdom. There's tactics that mm. you, to every situation. Mm. Find a way, but be safe about it. And know that God can keep you through it. Mm. And he, you can look like you have not been through anything mm -hmm. because God did it for me and he can do it for you. Mm -hmm. So we need to post, make sure the Bridge Over Troubled Waters yes. is a good resource, an awesome, awesome place where they not only uh, take women abuse women in but they also help them get back on their feet mm -hmm. yeah, I mean apartments work just um, sometimes you have to leave your place and of course if you break a lease that can follow you but they have attorneys that can help you get that off so you can find another safe place so the bridge over troubled waters is an excellent resource mm -hmm. we work closely with the bridge if you need information you can always inbox me um, they're gonna post it in a minute yeah. also the Sherman house is another yes. place um, that is very small but it's it's very secluded yes. and women come from all over to be there I mean sometimes you have to literally leave the mm -hmm. state and go underground yeah. in order to be safe in order to live mm -hmm. you know to live and that's yes. just the bottom line. So there are places you can call hotlines. Mm -hmm. There, You can go to your local church body. Most oh, often they have information as well. Definitely you can come to my church because yes. I'm going to help you. Yes. I'm going to help <laughs> you. Yes, I, I am. I'm going to help you now. I'm telling you because that, that cannot be tolerated. No. No. Abuse will not be tolerated. And most often in the churches, we will report child abuse and all of that. Yeah, but we don't that. take on... Uh, domestic abuse mm -hmm. as serious, you know, like mm -hmm. between a husband and a wife or whatever. Right, right. Well, sometimes, and now I'm talking to the church now, we have this thing, just pray it through, you know, submit and all that. Yes, yeah, submit and call the popo. That's submit right. and call the police. Yes. Okay, yes. submit to 911. That's yes. what you submit to. Yes. Because yeah. that's not, it's not okay. Yes. And that's the old way of doing things. You can't right. pray away anger no. on somebody else. You pray away your own anger. Right. Yeah. You know, you can find yourself in a place where you lose your life yes. because yes. you are following these unwritten rules mm -hmm. and laws that have been placed by man. No, the the Bible, we're going to stay Bible now. Oh, wow. It says that the law is for the lawless. Yes. And a domestic abuse is against the law. The law. Yes. Okay? Yes. So we have, to, we have to deal with this stuff. Take it head on. Our young girls, I know um, several people that were in these relationships, they said that this, this stuff started in high school. Yep. As young as high school. Now it's, it's starting school. in middle school. school. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's starting in middle school. And so the mm -hmm. social media and media, all of this, when they see all this stuff on television, mm -hmm. a lot of our young girls think that it's okay, mm -hmm. that he just mm -hmm. loved me. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's the, no, that's not love. Love doesn't hurt. Love doesn't give you a black eye and slap you in the face and mm -hmm. all of that. That's not love. We have to start educating our children, educating mm -hmm. our young girls, as young now as elementary school, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. to let them know that domestic abuse mm -hmm. is never okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, I got out. Um, I made the decision 
that the reins of my life and my daughter's life were not to be put in any other hands than okay. God and myself in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't any big pie in the sky. It was a, a small, still voice type mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. that I said, today's the day. That's good. I left with the clothes on my back mm -hmm. and my four-year-old, three-year-old daughter at the time. And I went back home. I, you know, the police had been called because before I really undid everything that I did before. I didn't remain quiet on that last go round. Good. I was verbal. I was vocal. I called my sister Good. and my sister told me, call the police, mm -hmm. call the police. My father came, the police came mm -hmm. and the policeman asked me, what did I want to do? I said, sir, I want my name back, mm -hmm. my peace, mm -hmm. my child mm -hmm. and my life. Mm -hmm. That's good. And we're gone. He can have his house. Mm -hmm. He can do what he want with the car. With the... I'm gone. And when I got out, my father told me, he said, and you will not return. Mm -hmm. He said, I know you're an adult, but you will not. Mm -hmm. And so I had strong family support. Mm -hmm. I had spiritual good. counsel. Good. But I had the will to say I'd rather fight with God. Mm. on God's side than to fight with the enemy. Yes. yes. I couldn't do it no more. I had to break the soul tie. The mm. soul tie had the to be soul broken. Tie. Yes. Oh God. And I got out. I got two jobs. I was cleaning a bank at night, cleaning toilets and working my professional job in the daytime. Mm. Put my baby through private school, got a restraining order, changed my number. I mean That's I went good. through the whole and it was a lot of work and it was a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. But today the butterfly mm. <laughs> that I have become because of Christ, yes. mm. I would not go back if you pay me all the money in the world mm. to that mindset. Oh, that's goodness good. gracious. That's yes. a whole different mindset. Yes. So that's how I got out. Yes. My yes. mindset shifted. My yes. life was valued and my daughter's life was more valuable than trying to repair what was beyond repair. That's oh, yes. so goodness. Um, let me um, ask you something. You have a, a domestic violence awareness conference or something coming um, up. Could well, you tell them we about had that? It, um, we created a, a forum and a brunch. It's called Speak. We are listening. And we call it that because uh, a lot of times people don't speak. Like I said, they're silent and they're silent cues that they're nonverbal cues, mm -hmm. but they speak so loudly if Come we on. just listen. Mm -hmm. So okay. we started having forums and we'll do brunches. And this year we had it already at the beginning of October. We gave an award for a person that's no longer a victim, but a victor. Oh, wow. Like and then we're seeking mm -hmm. to build a house called Heaven's House. That's our big project that's up on the horizon mm -hmm. to provide just all those resources that I figured out were hard to get to in that time that were needed. Clothing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. a place to stay in a mm -hmm. state of emergency, of job training, resources. Yes. Heaven's House would house that on site. Good deal. Um, so awesome. that's that's what we're doing in the area of advocacy and helping people find true answers. And you a counselor? Uh, no, say. I'm a psychology major. A psychology but I major. Work, um, wow. for children. I'm a retired social worker. Wow. So how would they get in touch with you um, for, to help or be a part have, of it? At the church, they can always call us there. Um, it's 346-800-7915. Of course, we're on social media, um, Beauty for Ashes International Women's Outreach Ministry, Family of Love International Christian Center is there. And then uh, my personal ministry is VBL Ministries um, on Twitter, Instagram, social media. Email, you can email me at vbluckitministries at gmail.com. Awesome. And we'll tangible. post that all to the page. Post that all yes, we'll to get the it page. All posted. Okay, so we're going to bring it out. <laughs> Bring it out. Thank you, ladies. Oh, gracious. Thank y'all so much for being a part. As you all know, nobody is above abuse. Like Lady Girl said, it can even be spiritual. So we just want all of you to know that you are not alone, that God is here for you. We are here for you. The resources are on our page. And we just want you to know that he loves you and that you can come out. You don't have to stay where you are. There is hope for you. You don't 
have to remain where you are. There is hope for you in the truth. You are. Available, there's love to cover fear. You can escape. There is a way you can arise and come back to life. You are not alone. You're not on your own. It's not your fault. Things don't have to be as they ought. Come on, arise. Hope come alive. Let the strength rise. Break the silence, stop the violence, amplify your voice. Break the silence, stop the violence. It's time to amplify your voice. You have a choice. God is here for you. So, so Father, we just thank you for this time of sharing together in your presence. We thank you that you hear and you see and nothing escapes your gaze. And we thank you, Father, that you're meeting the people where they are. They will not continue to live scarred. But we thank you that your love is going in and it's covering them, Father. And it's erasing the fear. And it's letting them know that they can escape. That there is hope. And we thank you that you're bringing people into their pathway, Father God, to help them out of where they are. I thank you that their mindsets are shifting and they're realizing that there is hope. That there is a greater position that they can walk into and I thank you that just as these women came out and they have the bravery father to step out and say no more these women these men whomever it is that they're coming out of where they are and I thank you that they will not just be victims that will not be their mindset that I'm a victim but victory will arise because the truth of who they are will come alive their eyes will be enlightened their eyes of their understanding will be enlightened and the truth will free them father God they'll find you where they are you'll meet them and you'll put people in their path to help them along the way to come to the place where you design and you destined and just like Karen and Lin Valencia they'll not look like what they've been through I thank you for victory I thank you for triumph I thank you that they are overcomers they are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens them and I thank you that you're the God who makes all things new so you're making it new they're breaking the silence they're stopping the violence amplifying their voice telling their story so that you can get the glory and men can be free and as they're free, they're going in and freeing others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.